All right, so I watched something this weekend that I did not think that I would. I just kind of clicked on and watched it. That is 1963's Cleopatra. Um, I actually ended up watching it on HBO Max because it was in HD, and so there's a lot more detail. However, other than the opening scene and the very, very end, it's cropped. So it looked really, really good, and there's a ton of detail, um, but it was a little frustrating that they they zoomed in to cut the... So you have... They zoom in so you don't have black on the top and bottom, but then you end up losing a little bit of the picture on the right and left. So here's what the shot looks on the DVD, what it looks like on the DVD. So if you look at that little, that little gold thing over there, right here, there, um, and then we go back to the stream on HBO Max, you'll be able to actually see how much of the image is cut off. And then if you look at his armor, um, like this little thing right there. And then we'll go, we'll go look at it on HBO Max and see if any of the top or bottoms cut off. And then there's this other side. So you can see one little guy right there and then a little pointy thing right there. So let's go, let's compare it to the cropping on HBO Max. Okay, now this is back to the HBO Max stream. And check this out, the plot thickens. So look at that. So we're missing... Seems like just a sliver of the right and left. Like if you look right there, that thing's cut in half and you can't see anything to the left of it. And then over here, or I guess to the right of it, uh, you can't see the, it's probably like a siege machine or something. You can't see it at all. But look at his armor. Look at that. You see that? The other one was about right there, right? So I guess, I guess on this the stream you can see slightly higher up and down. So I'm trying to decide which one would actually be closer to the 70 millimeter that I believe it was filmed in. Either way, it was a little bit frustrating to have the image cropped and zoomed. I'd rather have the actual framing. So even with the annoyance of the crop, this HD version on HBO Max has an incredible amount of detail. Just look at this. Just this long panning shot. You just imagine what this would look like in 4K with with like Dolby Vision. Actually at the right frame rate. Look at that. So much detail. So this part on the DVD um, just looks really, really crunchy. Like all the little individual people, um, they all the detail just kind of got lost and it started murking together. So, so even though the HBO one was cropped, it was still nicer on the detail level. And like I said, I just I can imagine this would look really, really good on 4K if they ever did it. So I didn't mention, but this was the first time I've ever seen this movie, and I I've always wanted to watch it just because I love watching all the big kind of swords and sandals epics of yesteryear. Um, but look at Cleopatra's entrance into the movie, rolling out of the rug. That was pretty awesome. And then later when the guards are escorting her back to her apartment, and she's in the middle of like all these Roman soldiers, and she's like, she's like, the corridors are dark, gentlemen, but do not be afraid. I am with you. And I was just like, <laughs> that's so cool. That's a good quote. Okay, another thought on like the DVD versus the HD stream on HBO Max is that the DVD had a lot of specks, like film, like dirt and dust on the film, and the HD looked looked cleaner. I didn't see any film scratches, but there's definitely, it's just a digital noise mess. Also, the HBO stream cut out the overture at the beginning, so they just cut right into the opening credits. So I actually watched this movie over two sittings. Um... But I just I just took my time and wasn't in a hurry. I know that some of the criticism of the day, like back in the day when it came out, was just that they're like it was kind of slow, but I knew that starting it, I knew how long it was, so I just took it over two days and just took it all in. And my goodness, this movie is so epic. And it's like almost every shot is jaw-dropping, just the set design or the 
insane amount of extras and all of the detail. Um, it was it was pretty incredible to watch. Just imagining the effort it must have taken to make this movie, and then how sad they must have been to have have it taken several years for them to actually make their money back on it. So I thought it was interesting that in Caesar's little apartment here that he has this little this little box where he keeps his his little like seizure bite down thing and other stuff and I realized it's basically a soldier's footlocker so according to this movie soldiers have had footlockers for a long long time so I, I just thought it was kind of cool all right I love this kind of stuff like phalanx turtle battle formation stuff look at how cool that is this movie is so epic. Just the amount of, like, coordination it would take to make it. Like, look at all those guys. Like, they're actually doing, like, the turtle. They might not be in as heavy of gear as the guys who really were there. But, I mean, they're actually they're actually being coordinated with one another to make that turtle. Like, that is so cool. All right, I wrote down a couple quotes. One from Caesar and one from Cleopatra that I think are particularly timely. Um, I'm not going to explain why, though. You'll have to figure that out. So Caesar has, he's got epilepsy or something where he falls down and has seizures. And he says to Cleopatra, he says, I shall tumble down before the mob, foam at the mouth, and make them laugh. So he doesn't want, he's worried that he's going to show weakness to the people uh, by falling down with his sickness. So. Interesting. Anything come to mind on that one? Uh, and then here's another one that I think is really timely. Um, this movie is really interesting with the basically just dictators and political intrigue and the leadership and manipulation and uh, rising and falling of, of countries. But listen to this quote from Cleopatra. She says, take a little, then a little more until finally you have it all. It's just like, wow, spoken like a true kind of like a tyrant or power hungry type person. So anyway, is there anything nowadays that that reminds you of? So the context that of her line was that she was talking about countries and lands as far as accepting a little and taking more and more and more until you have it all. Um, but we can see leaders of all times using that strategy to get what they want. I mean, look at this shot. This movie is so freaking epic. I couldn't, I could not believe it. Um, so this movie's rated G in 1962. Correction, 1963. And yeah, rated G and I was watching it. And so the rating I would give it now, if I, if I gave it a modern MPAA rating, or I guess they call it the MPA now. Anyway, I would give it PG-13 for partial nudity, Vi violence and mature themes. I think that would be a more, more accurate rating. But like rated G, there's like a lot of scantily clad people. There's a little bit of fake blood and some war violence, and then there's quite a bit of mature themes. You know, like suicide and political intrigue and manipulation and affairs and stuff. So anyway, I think PG thirteen would be it. It be solidly PG thirteen nowadays, but it's just it's really far off. I know like 2001 Space Odyssey is rated G um, and it has like some scary parts. So, I mean, I would argue for that one to be PG, but it's just the rating system is really off lots of times, I think. Okay, so this part really intrigued me that was about halfway through the movie. So her husband, boop, his funeral pyre is literally burning or the ashes are still warm and she's on her way back to Egypt and look at this smug smile on her face it's almost like looks like the creepy inhuman smile that Martin Short does in Clifford but yeah just look at that smug face husband's funeral burning in the background and she's just she's plotting and scheming she just had a conversation with Mark Anthony about future power and such and she is she is a manipulator and she got stuff done um, ultimately to her, her own sad end. But I do, at least in the way the movie portrayed it, it 
it seemed that she actually really did love Caesar and really did love Mark Antony while also scheming and maneuvering and manipulating to try and get more power. All right, so forgive my eye goobers. I've, it's from the gel eye drops that I have to take for my eyes to recover from the laser eye surgery. They're actually kind of having a bit of a relapse. I guess there's some, anyway, there's, I'm having to take gel eye drops more aggressively and they're going to check on it later. But anyway, there's some goobers. So thanks for your patience with tolerating that. Okay. In a movie full of mind-blowingly epic, beautiful, well-staged, incredibly detailed and choreographed shots, this one probably stands out as my absolute favorite. And, uh, We'll, we'll watch it here. So Anthony's bummed that his, that his buddy, General Rufio, or was it Rufo? Anyway, sorry, it's late, I'm tired. Anyway, his buddy, General R, just got killed. And uh, look at this crane shot. This is incredible. Look at this thing. The camera just follows him as he gets up. Oh my gosh, yes! All those horses and stuff coming over the hill to get him. That is an amazing shot. Totally took my breath away. I know that's like a cheesy thing to say, but that that is awesome. All right, so finally, I'm really glad I saw this movie. It was really epic. It was, uh, I laughed, I felt, felt feels, I enjoyed the battle parts. I got caught up in their, their sordid affairs and the costumes were incredible. Some of the reviews of the day said the acting wasn't very good. I don't know what they're talking about. The main cast did outstanding, and the music was really, really good and very, um, I felt like it was very appropriate and fitting. There was like some a little bit of like, I almost thought like a saxophone was going to bust out at the very beginning of Caesar and Cleopatra's relationship, but it, it still kept it like old-timey style and epic. And I think the theme was really good. I could see listening to the soundtrack, honestly. It was really good. While it's not as uplifting as some other epics like Ben-Hur or the Ten Commandments, it was still really good, still really worth watching. I think a 4K of this would be mind-blowingly awesome. Uh, there was one part that was a little too much for me, and that is, uh, I figure I can spoil it. This movie's 1963, and most people will never watch it, or if you have seen it, then spoilers okay. Um, when their son gets killed, it's, it's off-screen, but you see... You see the guy wearing the ring around his neck, and then it it shows the kid in the wagon with like a little bit of blood on his face. And it's not so much that it looks graphic, because he looks fine, you know, the kid's just closing his eyes with makeup on his face. But it's just the fact that they killed him, and they found him. You know, you think he's going to be safe because he's riding out of the city with a bunch of guards. And uh, they find him, and they kill him. And it's just, it's like a dark reminder of how awful we can be to each other and that we have been in history and also that we're being to each other right now. We being like humans on earth. Anyway, that part was a bit too much. That really, that really hit home them killing their son. Anyway, this movie was great. It was really, really long and definitely would be a solid PG 13, not a rated G. Uh, yeah, it had more action than I thought. I thought it was going to be mainly like, melodrama affair type stuff so it had actually cool like war action in it and uh yeah i enjoyed it i'm not gonna watch it as much as anything else and um uh, as a good owner subscriber pointed out this is actually in my for sale section if you saw me panning across that really quickly when i was doing my collection video so um yeah because out of the dvd and the stream the stream has so much more detail that's a little bit annoyingly cropped but the stream just has way more detail and I haven't actually seen the Blu-ray of this. And like I said, I'd love to see a 4K, but let me know what you think of this movie. Have you seen, have you seen this? Do you like swords and sandals epics? Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.